The Bat Chat. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Bat Chat. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Steve Maxey. Finally, Steve and I coming back to talk about more Batman the Animated Series episodes. Today, we are tackling the uh, second volume, 20th episode, at least on Amazon and DVD order. This is What is Reality? The second Riddler episode. And Steve, have you noticed that Riddler episodes have to always be questions? <laughs> yeah, it would feel awkward if it wasn't a question. That's right, yeah. Are there other Riddler episodes later that aren't questions? Um... I think the episode where he comes back and he's somewhat he, he, he's somewhat healed is not Riddler. Riddler's, uh, Riddler's reform. That's not a question. Oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's the Riddler's yeah. reform. Yeah, yeah, that's... that would have been a better title. Question mark. Oh, that would have been great. Yeah, we're just on principle. We have to put a question mark at the end of Riddler episodes. Well, question marks at the end of most sentences are fun. It's, it's like the Dimitri <laughs> Martin joke of like, kind of doesn't mean anything after except after certain sentences where it means everything. Like, you're going to live. Kinda. <laughs> or I love Question you. Question mark? Kinda. <laughs> yeah. Uh, almost got him. Question mark? <laughs> well, anyway, folks, we're and gonna... I am the knight. Question mark? This this is uh, one of those odd episodes that, uh, that I think has a lot of fun visual stuff in it, but ultimately isn't great. Uh, but it's one of the, from, from my childhood, one of the more memorable ones. Yeah, I remember it. Mostly because when I saw it, it was almost immediately dated. Oh, yeah, of course. And, that, and that's kind of probably going to be the crux of our conversation. So let's go ahead and just get right into it. <laughs> uh, if you're going to watch it with us, get your DVD out or uh, get it started on Amazon Prime. As I said, this is the 20th episode of Season 2 uh, or, or uh, the second volume. Make sure you're watching What is Reality and not some other episode. And get ready to press play <laughs> whenever I say now. Here we go, Steve. Everybody, please press play right now it's nice that they finally streamlined the intros for the second volume and we aren't playing roulette anymore yeah although i kind of wanted to hear you just keep saying that and not break to you that you weren't gonna have that anymore just for the longest <laughs> time you kept going oh wow it's it, it's it's still the original episode i'm like no steve it, it, it's always that now i have trust issues when it comes to amazon <laughs> Um, so, this is one of those episodes where I feel like if you want to redo it, it's very easy, and it could be very interesting, but because technology progresses so quickly, I think this is just an inherently difficult story to tell. We have that in a couple places here and there in this series, but for the most part, it gets away with being ambiguous about time period and technology and stuff. And yeah. And this is one of those episodes where... It feels dated because we we go because we're dealing with a technology that was very much I don't want to say in vogue. It, it was a thing that we were thinking about a lot then, and we're very curious about uh, virtual reality. And it's interesting to do this now because we're, it, that's finally making a comeback, and we seem to have finally you know caught up with it. Yeah, we're we're, um, we're, fi we're finally ready to do it right. Yeah, and and for me, I mean. I I don't think this is a bad episode because it is dated. I don't think being dated makes something bad on principle. Certainly. I think more of it is just it's almost immediately dated. Um, also, why would you jog in place while getting money from an ATM? That just seems like a bad idea. Um, but, like, this is one of those things, like, a couple months after this episode came out, I feel like people weren't looking at it the same way. I also think that... It's in. It might be inherently a bad idea for your Batman episode to open exactly the same way as Maximum Overdrive. Yeah, yeah. No one likes that movie. <laughs> Eric and I have been talking about doing a commentary for that movie for years. Oh, God, yes. One of you has to read the book, though. <laughs> Wait, that wasn't a book. There was an adaptation of it later. Oh, okay. Well, why would you read that? It's an because adaptation. It's, um, just because it'd be fun to see how much better hey, or look, worse. Hey, look, it's not Clark Kent at the Stock Exchange. <laughs> not Clark Kent. There's a there's a weird thing with everything computer based that always bugs me. Yeah. Which is that things don't change immediately. So like a second ago, we saw that guy's bank balance go from like five thousand something to zero. <laughs> Computers still don't work that way. You'd have to log out then log back in before the update takes, Even and that's always now. takes me out of the experience. I just love how cartoony that guy is. That guy is, and how cartoony a lot of these voices are. Yeah. 
<laughs> Into a compact car. Um, like, who who is directing the voice uh, artist in this episode? They just the, know. The they just know how bizarre this concept is. Oh, I guess. It's great. Yeah. And and there's, uh, and there's Commissioner Gordon with as cowlicky as that ever gets. Yep. Yep. Ice cream cone head is. Ice back. cream cone head is back. Um, that sounds like a tick villain. That needs to happen. Um, there, well, there actually is an ice cream villain called Uncle Creamy. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> and he does have an ice cream head. It's so weird to see Gordon take the jacket off and keep the suit on. It's also weird to see him see Batman and look like he's literally having a heart attack. <laughs> no, and that will come up later. <laughs> when we get to I Am The Night. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, see well, and of course, the crux of the conflict here toward the end is, oh no, uh, Jim Gordon might get a heart attack. Well, his jacket just came back on off in <laughs> between frames. That was weird. <laughs> um, oh, I'm so glad you pointed that out. I did not notice that. Uh, Jim Gordon, you have the worst superpower. <laughs> you see, is this useless. is where Captain Logan got the jacket for Spawn Year. It was actually bought at auction from the show. It's Gordon's coat, but repurposed. See, it jumps on and off of people, and it much preferred being in this universe because there is no Spawn stuff to kill it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, are these guys are the twin th cops? Are they brothers? They must be. They look almost identical. They look exactly <laughs> they look the like, same. They look like henchmen, although they are henchmen, aren't they? Oh, I, oh, they actually are henchmen. Yeah. That guy was reading those pages really quickly. Yeah, I, yeah, and he doesn't look that smart, nor does he sound that smart later. When, when he when he hands that to the Riddler and he's like, is this what you're looking for, Mr. Nimmet? Yes, of course it was. So but, Yes, but I'm a really fast reader. Yes, but how's your <laughs> comprehension? Well, it's He's like not the guy so in good. Iron Man 3 that just happens to know how much distance there is between um, Florida and Tennessee. <laughs> He just knows off the top of his head. He's like, I'm, I'm good like that. That's that Brian Regan joke. But my comprehension plummeted. <laughs> um, so I think th this whole idea of hacking into things like this is something that that works so much more in, in today's context. Like after things like Sony hacks and, and, and um, what happened with the interview and like um, Target getting hacked like and Social Security getting hacked. Like there's just so many cases of real world hackers showing up and like particularly now that we have groups like Anonymous and stuff. It just seems like this is an episode that could very easily be repurposed to fit like a more modern context. And it it's really weird to me that Batman... In, in as much as I've read in New 52, never deals with, like, a master hacker. That's a great point, and that's not really what what Riddler exactly is in his Euro year. No, not, not exactly. It, it, it's part of that's there, but I feel like you could have gone more with it in a different story. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. <laughs> These guys are so bumbling. <laughs> uh, but no, that's, that's, a, until dumb. that's a really good point. Like, bring back this... Um, but yeah, bring back this concept and do, and do it in the comics, yeah, you know, for today. Um, but you could say that the episode is maybe a little bit of a, ahead of its time because of that, but that's not to say that even in 92, 93, hacking wasn't a problem. It was, it was certainly more of a thing. Like, I mean, the, the whole idea of like an electronic monitored stock exchange and like SNL crisis and stuff, there are things that feed into creating this episode that come from very natural fears. I think it's just a matter of like... They thought ahead, they just didn't think far enough ahead. Where, like, they had the right concept, but, like, they, they, tried to, they tried to keep it in that context of the 1990s way too much, where, like, Robin's got, like, the ridiculous virtual reality thing, and we go into virtual reality here, it gets really corny. Yeah, and see, like, you're, you're going to the social commentary place, and I, I wouldn't have even thought to talk about that stuff, because it doesn't feel like an episode that's really talking about, about that stuff. Right. That, that's just the... That's yeah, just, I mean, this is, this is more like a fun episode than... I always love it when two characters say the same thing at the same time. That's fun. <laughs> it's just not a um, thing that happens all so, out The Department of Motor Vehicles! Um, th this is as 60s Batman as the Riddler stuff gets, where everybody yeah. immediately knows the answers to the riddles. Even though they feel really, maybe I'm just bad at riddles, but like these are the the, the same kind of like sixty Batman riddles where the joke is there. There's pro there's probably a hundred answers that would fit, but our heroes always know what the answers are because they can get in 
the because we're supposed to think that they're able to get into the psychology of the villain that that comes up with them. <laughs> a sparrow with a machine gun. Oh yes, the only possible answer. If you read anything by Chuck Dixon or Peter Milligan when they write the Riddler, they do this thing where the riddle will show up. And then the next page, Batman is to the location that solves the riddle. And you actually have to flip back and forth between the riddle and the location and, and figure out through the art why that riddle fits that location. And I think that's really clever. Because it's still like the dumb, really obvious, well, of course, only Gotham City would have this. But because it's a comic and you have to go through pages, I think it works better. That's really cool. I mean, it's, it's distancing you from your protagonist, but sometimes we do that with Batman on purpose. Yeah, I mean, I think at that point, it's more about like appreciating, oh, Batman... And is a really smart dude. Um, yeah, and challenging your reader on... This will date the commentary a little way. bit. Yeah, go ahead. So, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, um, this will date the commentary a little bit, but as of right now, DC Rebirth is using the animated series Batmobile. Sometimes it's animated series, and sometimes it's got a weird, like, 60 shield on it, but they're using this show's Batmobile, and I'm really happy about that. It's cool, and they're doing it consistently between books. Yeah, I know. I'm like, so excited they for that. Decided, so cool. Apparently, across the line, this is the car we're using. Yeah, that and the Greg Capullo costume redesign, which I like. I think that's a cool costume. It's okay. I was hoping we'd get away from it. Um, it's one of those I think only certain artists can draw. Um, but anyway, back to this. This driverless car thing again is interesting because now that's more of a concern. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a like, there's just so much in this where I'm like, clearly you could do have. this episode better. Yeah, but again, you could still make the case that, you know, isn't it cool that it's that it's sort of ahead of its time? Oh, yeah, no, that's totally fair. Um, this absurdly sized monitor cannot be good for their eyes. <laughs> like, you're, you have to look up at it, and it's twice the size of your body. Yeah, and I, I forget because we've been talking, but uh, is are we are we in police headquarters right now? Or are we are we yeah right? We're not in the Batcave. Why does police no, headquarters no, have a Batcave computer? <laughs> That's like a miniature Batcave computer. It's like Batman had to have given them that. Why is it that big? It's very bizarrely placed. I I don't know if you've ever watched Yu Gi Oh, but if you, if you go inside the Millennium Puzzle, this is exactly what it looks like, except it doesn't have a red tint. Yeah, it's an Escher painting. Exactly. It's exactly what it is. It's MCS you're waiting. <laughs> it's, uh, it, this episode, as you're, as you're suggesting, uh, sort of called a lot of stuff that, that would happen later, and some of it is maybe inevitable. One of them, though, is the Virtual Boy. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know what it is, because I don't know anything about programming. There, there must be something about virtual reality at this time that lent itself more to red and black than any other color spectrum. Not that the Virtual Boy is actually virtual reality, but there's just, for some reason, that's often the color scheme that's associated with that. Right. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It seems like, because it's, it's the Tron thing, too, like, where Tron always does, like, red and blue. And it, it feels surreal and somehow more, uh, you know, computerish. Yeah to have that kind of color scheme. And of course, it's, it's weird going back and looking at this stuff now because computers run our lives in a way that they, yeah. didn't, they didn't at that time. But we knew we were on our way to that. Uh, this was... Um, this would have come out like months before people started actually getting the internet in their houses. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of people, but like this was, this was just before dial-up. Yeah, um... It's a very strange episode to like go back to, and I, I wonder, because I forget who wrote this, but I wonder what they were thinking th about this episode. Like, I, I wonder if there was like a very serious attempt to do something social commentary wise, or it, and that just got away from them, or maybe this was just one of those ideas they had on the floor and they decided to animate like some of those action heavy episodes. It seemed like at, at the time, you know, when I was a kid, that everything was dealing with virtual reality or dealing with computers and the advent of the internet and stuff. Like, it was it was capturing our imaginations. Yeah. And I think that's probably the main reason that we did this, and, and also trying to modernize the Riddler. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And also, to, to be fair, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, how dated this is and how, um, and, and how like, like kind of uh, odd maybe for this show 
it was to go here. But remember that from the beginning, we were updating the Riddler because we made him a video game maker. So, like, we already did that. And no, remember, we, remember we made fun of the maze game for having, like, uh, like 8-bit Mario sound effects that didn't remotely go with it? No, that's true. Yeah, there were little things that were already doing that. Um, odd d d d at this time to think of video games even existing in Batman's world. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, this is where I am definitely reaching, but I think is interesting <laughs> um, because it is the question of what is reality. So, is reality? just part of your experiences. And if it is just your experiences, then Gordon being stuck inside this virtual reality computer where he's like in this in this ride going super fast in circles, is that not real? Yeah, and I mean, like, it would be easy to say, well, obviously it's a created world, so it's not real, but if it's real to your brain, if your brain thinks it's real, then... Maybe the existential questions, or I guess I guess metaphysical questions, don't even matter. Where it's like, well, if your brain thinks it's real, it's real enough to you. It's 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 real enough that it's dangerous. Yeah, because I mean, if if it's all about just like creating or being tailored to your perceptions, then yeah. there you could make the case this is real in the same way you can make the case that computers already think. You can make the yeah sure uh, a case that you couldn't make then, but you can make now. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Um, uh, yeah. No. That's that's really interesting. Um, I mean, obviously, it, it seems it seems really easy for me to say, well, yes, of course, this is not reality, and that the question and that, and that the episode isn't really working to answer that question in any kind of you know you know fascinating like like uh, philosophical kind of way. Uh, yeah, it's not trying to be about that. It's just I don't a think question. it. I don't think it really needs to. I'm not sure. It's just weird to ask the question as an episode title, and then for your for your episode to be more about the. Uh, novelty of it. Yeah. This is ridiculous, and, by the way. Yeah, but I love how ridiculous it is. Oh, me too. It's hilarious, and I love it. Um, and before this, before Batman came into this door, I just noticed that um, it says riddle with three question marks, but before that, it said two question marks, riddle, two question marks. It's inconsistent. Oh, yeah, that's weird. Just like the jacket. Just like the jacket. And once again, Steve, another train. Oh, yeah, another train. So many trains in this show. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know if it means anything. It probably doesn't. Uh, uh, trains are, And trains and superheroes are just a thing that go together. Yes, and, and planes. And it's planes. Like, it's like beans and cornbread. <laughs> um, we haven't talked at all about him, but I like that Robin's here. And this is one of those things where we get to New Adventures later, and Tim Drake is in that, but he's not Tim Drake. He's Jason Todd with Tim Drake's name. But if you did more Riddler-focused episodes for that, and you had Tim Drake there, and you and you did more with like the computer stuff, this version of the Riddler and comic book computer-heavy Tim Drake would have been fantastic for us for each other. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, it's important to note, of course, too, that that this is our, only our second Riddler episode, and that the first Riddler episode wasn't that long ago. But but that uh, Robin's in both, and that Robin hasn't been in very many episodes, but he's always in the Riddler episodes. Remember if he's in Riddler's Reform? Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, he is. Um, because it's it's where... There's a big thing with, like, a toy line reveal that Robin shows up for. So that's oh, there. that's right. Okay. I, I guess I just meant so far. Like, like that seems to be on purpose. It's almost like we've, we're building a formula. Yeah. For yeah. what the Riddler episodes are. Like, Batman doesn't do this kind of thinking. Like, he's a detective, but he's a Sherlock Holmesian detective. He's an old-school detective. Yeah, and Robin would Which just is, be more savvy with, with, like, modern technology, so it makes sense that Batman would recruit him for these kinds of missions. Although, come to think of it, isn't that kind of weird? Because Bat this is still a somewhat gadget-heavy Batman. That's true, yeah. Not a super gadget-heavy Batman, though. I mean, like, you, you get the sense that he didn't necessarily invent everything. I don't know yeah. that for sure, but, you know, we, we have, like, we have, like, Harold the Mechanic in the show. Like, 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 Alfred does some things, I think, I don't remember. But, like, like Batman doesn't seem to necessarily build his own stuff, because I don't think he makes his own stuff. By the way, it bothers me that this was never an action figure. This would have been the coolest action figure. They, they have Batman chess sets. I don't know why this isn't in the Batman chess set. But I really don't know why, when, when this, uh... When the show was on, we didn't have this, like, knight Batman on a horse figure, because there were so many silly... Uh, Batman figures. 
that yeah. had nothing to do with anything that ever happened in the show. I don't know why at that time. We do this all the time now. But back then, we tended to not actually go to the series for things we were... Uh, for, for outfits we were putting people in. Yeah. <laughs> we, would, we, we would make sure that we uh, you know, made figures for most of the characters. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. this should no. have been... And there were things like this for other lines, but we didn't have the we didn't have this in the Batman animated series line. It feels like something that people would want immediately too. There is another really great Batman Black Knight armor episode of um, uh, Batman Brave and the Bold, where him and Green Arrow get transported back to like medieval times, and they're helping Merlin. And I always wanted that Black Knight Batman as a as an action figure as well. Something about Batman being turned into a literal knight is just really cool. Yeah, I think so too. I like that this it's, time Robin doesn't get the help. Yeah. And that Batman's yeah. forced to work on his own. Uh, the, I, I don't think that his resolution is nearly as satisfying as the last Riddler episode, which is the reason that I think this ultimately isn't remotely as successful. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't, think this is in, I don't think this is necessarily a good episode anyway. Um, I feel like it's just very... Filled with, like, filled with a lot of shock value. Like, it's not really saying much of anything. It's just along for the ride all the way through. Yeah, it's it's definitely about the spectacle, and it's an, it's yet another kind of generic bad guy that wants revenge kind of episode. Uh, I mean, he's he's really authentic to comic book Riddler in that he is he has this this compulsion to beat Batman on an intellectual level, and I like yeah. that we have this sense of continuity where that comes specifically from the last time they were together. Yeah, and. Uh and and he he wants to he wants to get him back for uh you know you know stopping him last time and uh like 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 I like his I, I think his line is kind of is is kind of uh, uh funny because he's so out of touch when he's talking about how uh he you know Batman should have stayed out of it last time and with with uh with his trying to uh you know get revenge on his his old boss yeah, and he's like, he's like, it was a private matter and should have remained so. And Batman's like, yeah, uh, homicide. <laughs> I do like the touch though that Riddler is only on costume when he's in virtual reality. That in in the real world he doesn't have his suit on. I think that's cool. Um, that's a good point. Also, just question because I don't know if this is a real thing. Is the Baxter box a real thing? Because it just looks like a Rubik's cube to me, and I don't know why it's not a Rubik's cube. It's not a Rubik's cube because you'd have to pay for that. Would you? I've seen other cartoons use Rubik's cubes before. Uh, well, they probably paid for it. I mean, I mean, Rubik's is a registered trademark. No, that's true. It's just weird to, to see like a stand-in for Rubik's now that it's almost become like a cultural thing. No, I'm with you. Uh, but I mean, it, it still is a company, and somebody owns it. I like the idea that the Riddler. I, I wish they had actually said that he invented it, because I like the idea of Riddler inventing the Rubik's cube. That is such a Riddler thing. Yeah, that would be really cool. I also um, appreciate the fact that at least. Uh, Riddler maybe going brain dead is his fault and not Batman's. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too. Um, there are lots of elements here. I wish that Riddler's reform touched on anything with this episode. It kind of doesn't. Yeah, I don't remember much about that episode now, but if that's the case, that's kind of sad because there is a sense of continuity between this and the last one. Yeah. Especially because this show is so much about like having not only the recurring Batman villains, but also just special one-and-done villains that didn't want to have back. So the idea of continuity between any of the villains is, is inherently a good gimmick for this show. Do you know, I, I didn't notice this until just now, but are you picking up on how much of a new versus old motif there is in this episode? I didn't notice that. No, that's interesting. You have the World's Fair, and you had uh, the Riddler. I wish I'd brought this up earlier because I, I didn't think of it until just now, and now the episode's over. <laughs> but you've you've got uh, the Riddler with his face on the moon that uh, I think might be a callback to the silent film with uh, I can't remember the name of it, but the, but the, that early science fiction silent film with uh, the face in the moon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like that, and I think that's maybe what that's... But there, there's a bunch of callbacks to, like, 1950s science fiction and our, uh, and, and, and our love for the idea of the future and our, our wide-eyed, um, you know, uh, excitement about what could be. Like, it seems yeah. like, it seems like that's kind of a, of a looming thing that this episode is dancing around. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I had to, I'd have to go back and watch that. I think that maybe all three Riddlers have that have that motif going through because I think there's a little bit of that in the first Riddler episode. A lot more here though, because because it's all about like like a lot of it is futuristic and space stuff. Yeah, which is really interesting because the uh, the machine that in virtuality he puts Jim Gordon in is that uh, is that like that like test flight for astronauts machine. Oh, yeah, yeah, the thing that tests your G-forces. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what it's doing with that, but I just picked up on that. That's interesting. No, I never noticed that before. That's cool. Um, so anyway, uh, we're already out of time, and I feel like there are, like, like I didn't, we, we, there are a bunch of stuff I feel like we should have talked about, but I'm not sure what they were. There was a lot of just kind of reacting to the episode, I think. Isn't that weird? Well, yeah, and I mean, that's part of what the show is about, but I just, uh, I, like, like, like this episode always, like I said, stuck with me, and I always remembered it, and I, and I kind of wanted to try to get at the heart of why, uh, even though I don't think this is a great story, it was one of the more memorable ones. I think it's just imagery. It's possible. I mean, the whole Batman being in, like, this weird red and black zone when cloning himself is kind of cool to watch. Yeah, again, I wish that was a thing that came from him figuring something out and using his own ingenuity. Yeah. Because he and basically I mean, just says, just I can one... control things here because I have my own brain. And I'm like, that's a far cry from uh, jumping onto the hand of fate and reprogramming it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of amazing that he knew how to reprogram that. But I'm just saying, yeah. at least it was a cool thing that he thought to try to do. There is so much of that in fiction where a character gets stuck in a virtual reality and because they can think they somehow start to control the reality, and I never understood how that would really work. Yeah, and it's always a cop-out kind of ending. Yeah, because, I mean, your mind is going into a reality that is not that is not fit for you. It's under someone else's control. It's just you being able to think wouldn't alter the parameters of the program. Yeah, it seems like someone would have to tell you that you could do that. I mean, like, like that, that's part of why that works for me in The Matrix, it's yeah. like somebody somebody has to kind of tell you that you know you you uh it has to remind you okay this this world isn't rule isn't isn't real it has a different set of rules but like in that case even though the the rules are different it still has a set it still has rules <laughs> like what are the rules yeah. of this reality yeah so anyway, uh, everybody, thanks as always for listening. Sure, appreciate it. We'll see you again next week with another Bad Chat. Next time we're going to watch one of Steve's favorite episodes. Yes, I am the knight. It's, it's, I, great it's I am the knight. I am the knight? <laughs> question mark? I am the knight, exclamation point, and question mark. <laughs> I am vengeance? Question mark? I am Batman? Question that should have been a trilogy. I am vengeance? Yeah. I am the knight? I'm Batman? Yeah, that'd be good. How has there not been... I don't think there has been... How has there not been an episode title of any Batman show yet called I'm Batman? <sighs> that would be so cool. Seems like that should be a thing. That'd be so much fun. <laughs> anyway, thanks again for listening. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Batman. No, wait. I mean, I'm Steve. <laughs> we'll see. I'm Steve? I'm Steve, man? <laughs> we'll see you again next time. Bye!